Welcome to this series entitled From Faith to Faith, a study in Paul's letter to the Romans. Everyone knows that Romans chapter 1 verses 16 to 17 summarize or introduce all of Paul's thinking in his letter to the Romans. I am not ashamed of the gospel. For it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes, to the Jew first, and also to the Greek. For in it the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith. As it is written, the righteous man shall live by faith. The Gospel referred to in these verses is thought of by many people to be something just to get you saved and that when you become a Christian you are finished with the gospel and you come under a covenant the new covenant which is something different from the gospel but Paul wanted to preach the gospel to the Romans as it says in Romans 1:15. Thus, for my part, I am eager to preach the gospel to you also who are in Rome. Now, if Paul wanted to preach the gospel to those who were in Rome, who were already saved, who were Christians, who were members of the church, then it follows that Paul understood the gospel as being something by which Christians, that is, people who are justified, live. The gospel is that which the, the one who is just lives by. The gospel is the faith by which we live. It's not something that we discard after we become Christians, but it is, in fact, one and the same thing as the covenant under which we live as Christians. The gospel makes us Christians and the gospel keeps us Christians. We gain eternal life through the gospel and we maintain eternal life through the gospel. Paul uses several terms for the message from God which Paul has been sent to preach. On the screen now you can see seven of those terms. The gospel of Christ in the verse we've just read. The form of doctrine is what Paul calls it in Romans six seventeen. The law of the Spirit is what he calls it in Romans 8 verse 2. The word of faith is his term for it in Romans 10 verse 8. God's covenant is what he calls it in Romans 11 27. The perfect will of God is another name for the same thing in Romans 12 verse 2 and the revelation of the mystery is yet another term for the same thing in Romans 16 verse 35 these seven terms are interchangeable terms they mean the same thing and just by learning this simple fact you will avoid much misunderstanding, confusion and error. Now you will notice that one of the terms for the gospel is the word of faith. Or we may just simply shorten that to the faith. The faith, that's what the gospel is called. And in this series of lessons we're going to think of the gospel as the faith. And we're going to be talking about the faith which saves us. Of course, the gospel is the faith, but unless that faith is in our hearts and becomes our faith, it won't save us. It only saves the person who makes it their own faith. The faith comes out of the gospel and it becomes one's own. And that suggests to us that faith 
saving faith, the faith which justifies, must be a developing faith. It must be a faith that first God provides in the gospel, but which we take and receive unto ourselves and which we make our own faith and which we build and which we develop so that we can be justified by that faith. If you can understand faith like that as a developing faith, well then you will go a long way to understanding not only Paul's letter to the Romans and the various things that he says in that letter, but you will go a long way to understanding salvation itself. And this understanding of faith as a developing faith, not as something that happens to you at the moment of your conversion, and then something which you discard, more or less, or just put on the shelf and sort of take the attitude, well, I've got that faith now, that faith has been given to me by God, and that's fine. I'm saved, I'm justified, that's all I need to worry about. If you realize that that attitude is unsafe, and that faith is something that you must take from God and cause to grow and to develop and to strengthen in various ways. If you've got a full understanding of that, then your faith will indeed save you. And you will be amongst the just who live by faith. But if you don't understand faith that way, then you won't be amongst the just who live by faith. You live by faith by working at your faith. Amongst the Protestant churches for many centuries, there has been an unfortunate point of view about faith. That faith is a work of God, that faith is something God does to you. And that's all there is to it. But you need to understand faith in a much more enlightened way. Faith is certainly something that God provides you because f faith is based in the gospel. And we all understand that the basis of the gospel is the work of Jesus Christ, which he did upon the cross. God presented him as a sacrifice of atonement through faith in his blood, to be the one who justifies those who have faith in Jesus. Romans 3, 21 to 26. Now we all understand that without that atoning sacrifice which Jesus made upon the cross, there couldn't be any gospel. There couldn't be any faith. There couldn't be any justification. There couldn't be any eternal life. But that doesn't mean that Jesus' death on the cross is the end of the story. It only means that it is the beginning. Without that, we couldn't even begin to find salvation through faith. But with that atoning sacrifice, faith becomes possible. And the gospel of the death of Jesus upon the cross and his resurrection from the tomb, that then begins a chain of events which results in our ultimately entering into eternal life. And that is what Paul means when he uses the term from faith to faith. He is speaking of the development of our faith as a faith that works hard towards our ultimate salvation. And so we have seen that the gospel, which Paul refers to in Romans 1.16, is the faith. Or to put it another way, faith comes by hearing that gospel. As Paul said in Romans 10.17, faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Paul means there, of course, that there is no valid faith except that faith which comes by the hearing of the gospel. There are plenty of other messages in the world. 
but only the Word of God, only the Gospel of Christ, has a saving message which can produce a saving faith. Paul explains why the Gospel can produce saving faith, which no other message in the world can do. For in it, that is, in the Gospel, the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. The righteousness mentioned here is justification, the words righteous and just mean exactly the same thing, and both words are used to translate the one Greek word. The life mentioned here is eternal life. A person lives by faith in exactly the same sense as Paul states in Romans 6 verse 23, For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. That's what faith produces for us. It produces eternal life. And so when Paul says back here in Romans 1, 17, the just shall live by faith, he is referring to living forever, eternal life. That is what we have from God through faith. And so we, we see in these verses a kind of chain. You cannot have eternal life unless you were justified or made righteous. And you cannot be justified unless you have faith. That is faith in Christ. And you cannot have faith in Christ unless you hear the gospel and there wouldn't be any gospel unless Jesus had died upon the cross and risen from the dead. The important thing is to view salvation by faith as a process rather than as an event. It's sort of a bit like getting married. We think of a wedding as an event. And yet we all understand that being married is a whole lot more than just a wedding. The wedding is only really the beginning of a whole process. And marriage is something that proceeds and develops and grows. And marriage as a relationship must be developed through a long lifetime together. In the same way, faith is not just an event that happens. Salvation by faith is something that begins, certainly, but then develops. And that's what Paul has in mind when he uses this expression, from faith to faith. As I said, he's speaking of a developing faith. And it's about the development of faith and salvation through faith that we're concerned in this series of lessons. If we can be just a little bit technical for a moment, you will notice that Paul does not say the gospel is salvation. He says it is the power for salvation. It is up to people to believe or have faith and to develop that faith so that they will become saved and remain saved. God resources and encourages that faith. It's true to say that our faith comes from God, but we mustn't think of that as meaning that it is just something that God does to us, and that's all there is to it. We must understand that it is something that God provides for us to work upon. And faith is not something that God does for us only. But it's a matter of us responding to God. And I think that we should view faith 
much more as our response to God in obedience to Him and in developing our character and our lives to glorify Him. We should think of faith much more in that light than as something that God gives to us. Certainly, faith comes by hearing the gospel, and the gospel is God's gift to us based on Christ's death and resurrection. We understand that. But we shouldn't think of faith as being a matter of something that God does for us, and then we, as I said before, put it on the shelf and admire it and say, isn't that a wonderful gift from God? It's something that God gives us to use and to develop. Imagine that you gave me this gift. It's a camera. And you gave it to me and I took it from you and I said, Oh, that is a wonderful gift. Thank you very, very much. And I just put it down. And I admired it. But that was all I did. How would you feel? You'd be saying to yourself, why on earth doesn't he unwrap the thing? You know, I have known occasionally of people who are given a gift at Christmas and they actually do say thank you and leave it all wrapped up and, and they just put it up on a shelf. I've actually seen that happen. Some old people do that. I don't do that, but some old people do. If I got this gift, the first thing I'd want to do is unwrap it and see what it is. Oh, it's a camera. Isn't that beautiful, I would say. And you'd expect me to respond to you just like that. But then if I just said, oh, yes, that's a beautiful camera. Thank you very much. And then I put it down on the shelf. And you came back to my house a week later and you said, how's the camera going? And I'd say, oh, it's fine. It's still there on the shelf. I'm still admiring it. I'm still so thankful for it. You'd say, why doesn't he use the camera? Why hasn't he taken any pictures with it? And if somebody gave me a camera, I'd just not be able to wait. I'd, I'd be opening it up and I'd be looking at it and I'd be trying it out and I'd be wanting to get out immediately and if there wasn't any film in it, I'd immediately run and buy some film and I'd start taking some photos. Isn't that what you would expect? Well, isn't it exactly the same with God? And you would like me to take that camera, to use that camera, and get years and years of use out of it. And as you saw me take better and better pictures and build up, a photo album full of lovely photographs, you'd feel very pleased and you would then feel that your gift has been made worthy and that I have accepted your gift but if I just simply left the gift wrapped up or even if I unwrapped it and just left it unused, you would not feel that I had glorified that gift or made that gift worthy. And it's like that, as I said, with salvation. God has given you faith by providing you with the gospel. But he expects you to believe that gospel, to obey that gospel, and to put that gospel into practice and apply it to your life. And he expects your justification by faith to be a matter of going from faith to faith. From the faith that he has given you as a gift, if you like, to a faith that is your fully developed and mature response to that gift he has given you. God wants you to develop your faith just as you would want me to develop my photography through the use of your gift of this camera. So don't leave your faith on the shelf. Make sure that your life is a story of from faith to faith, a developing faith, a faith that is growing and maturing and bearing fruit. When Paul uses the expression from faith to faith, 
He certainly doesn't imply that you move from one sort of Christian faith to another, or one denominational creed to another. You know, some people have the rather fanciful idea that one year God leads them to adopt the Anglican faith. And then, um, a year or two later, God moves them to adopt, perhaps, the Pentecostal faith. And then, as time goes by, he leads them into the Presbyterian faith. And then, finally, um, a little later on, they might experience some other kind of denominational faith. Now, Paul had nothing like that in mind whatsoever. And the Christian going from faith to faith has absolutely nothing to do with moving from one denominational faith to another. Denominational creeds should never have been called faiths in the first place. You know, people will speak of the different faiths in Christianity. And that is dignifying denominational creeds in a way that they don't deserve. The Bible never uses the term faith or faiths in that way. When Paul speaks of moving from faith to faith as a process of salvation, he's speaking of one faith, and that is the faith of the gospel. And the gospel doesn't produce a whole host of different faiths. Men with their own ideas do that. God's gospel produces only one kind of faith. And if you hear the gospel of Christ, and I hear the gospel of Christ, and we study that gospel and do that independently of any denominational creed, then you and I will end up with exactly the same faith. Because we have studied exactly the same word of God. And by hearing that word, God produces in us one and the same faith in each other. And it is a very dangerous thing for you to involve yourself in any denominational creed, especially if you think of it as a faith in some sort of legitimate way. No denominational creed is the faith. Only the gospel is the faith. And you can study the gospel quite independently of any denominational creed. You don't need to involve yourself in denominationalism and in all of the divisions of the denominational world. You can have the faith that justifies you and be truly a member of the household of faith. And you can fully develop your faith and worship God and glorify God and obey Him and bear fruit for him, you can do all of that without ever belonging to any denomination or confessing any denominational creed. I'd like you to think about that also as we move through these lessons together. Now I want to just introduce to you the various subjects that we will be studying in this series. Our next lesson is entitled Mystery made manifest. And in that lesson we'll look at the development from the faith which was focused in one nation, the Jewish nation, to the faith which is made known to all nations, and the development from what was a veiled faith of past ages to the revealed faith of this last age. Lesson 3 is entitled, Buried with Christ. And in that lesson we study the development from the faith of one who is enslaved, that is, enslaved to sin, to the faith of one who is saved, that is, saved from God's wrath. Lesson 4 is entitled, Your Body a Sacrifice. And that deals with the development from the faith which is in one's heart to the faith which is lived out in the flesh. Lesson 5 is entitled Glory in Tribulation. It examines the development from the faith which is sheltered and nurtured to a faith which is tested and tortured. 
And in our final lesson, lesson six, which is entitled, We Who Are Strong, we continue the same theme that we found in lesson five, and we look at the development from the faith of the weak Christian to the faith of the strong Christian. In Romans 15 and verse 29, Paul uses this expression, the fullness of the blessing. And I know when I come to you, I will come in the fullness of the blessing of Christ. I think that is what I mean when I speak of the development of faith. And I think that's what Paul has in mind when he speaks of our faith being from faith to faith. There is a fullness of the blessing in Christ. And our faith has to be developed until we come into that fullness of the blessing. Paul is speaking here of mature Christians, of a faith that has been fully developed. And earlier in chapter 15, he speaks of that same fullness of the blessing in more detail. Listen to it. Now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, that is, in faith, that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. And concerning you, my brethren, I myself also am convinced that you yourselves are full of goodness, filled with all knowledge, and able also to admonish one another. And that's exactly how I feel as I bring this series of lessons to you. As I talk to you about developing from faith to faith, I want you to understand how you can reach the fullness of the blessing in Christ by making your faith grow and blossom and mature. And so as we look at the different ways in which we can develop from faith to faith in the lessons that follow, my whole purpose and prayer is that you will not only develop your own faith to a strong and mature faith, but that you will be able to exhort others to do so as well. And so by mutual edification and the building up of those who have faith helping others who have a weaker faith to grow stronger, we will all come eventually into the fullness of the blessing. And our faith will be that faith which is truly a faith in Jesus Christ that glorifies Him. Thank you for watching. You are invited to visit simplybible.com.